Uh, my dad was William Nugent. He was in the Navy and the Air Force. He did eight years in the Navy, 12 in the Air Force. He spent two years on the Missouri and he put her into dry dock at the end of Korea. And um, that was probably the highlight of his whole 20 years. He was always very proud of his time on the Missouri. Uh, we have a lot of nice memorabilia and pictures and I've met a lot of his friends and people that he served with. At the time I have photographic proof of then and now. And um, because of him I was fortunate enough to become associated with these people from this association and have met some fantastic people and learned some great history. Well he started out in the Navy and he actually got out of the Navy after they put the Missouri in the mothballs. Because by then I was born and he didn't want to travel as much. And then the civilian world, nothing was going on in 1954, 1955, you know, things like that. So he went to the Air Force recruiters because, you know, oh, those guys don't travel. <laughs> well, they signed him up and he came in as a corresponding rank and finished out his 20 years with 12 years in the Air Force. And unfortunately for him, it, they lied because he did travel a lot <laughs> and do places. We traveled a lot, which was great. I mean, I lived in Bermuda for three years while he was in the Air Force, which was a great duty. My brother and sister were both born there. And then the other side of the coin was we were in Sergeant Bluff, Iowa for six months. And then he went to Greenland and then we had to come back to Ohio. So, I mean, you had the, the long term, you had the short term, and we averaged like every year we would move. So, I just thought that's what people did, you know, <laughs> because in 12 years of school, I went to eight different schools, and I just thought that, you know, and I meet people after we, he retired, and, well, I've been going to this school all my life. I said, really? Well, why would you do that? <laughs> you know, it was, so it was a different kind of lifestyle, but it was good. I, you know, there was, it's like anything else. You have your goods and your bads. Some people become extroverts and social you know, butterflies and other people turn into themselves, you know, and they become wallflowers. But um, it worked out for me. What he did actually in both services was he was uh, electrical power maintenance. In the Air Force he was basically uh, generators, um, power production plants for, you know, what they call SAGE sites, which is, you know, a power plant for the whole base, which they normally run. They don't usually use actual public utilities. So he was in the generators and the diesel engines and things like that. And in the Navy, he did the, that plus the fresh water reclaiming, you know, salt water transformation, water pumps, things like that. An interesting thing, uh, he was in Thailand, in Nakhon Phanam, which also was kind of a double duty over the river into Vietnam. And while he was there, we were living in a suburb of Cleveland, Ohio, and the Cleveland Plain Dealer, the t local uh, newspaper, had a contest, and I was a courier and I won a contest, and I was one of the money carriers that won a trip to uh, Expo 67 in Montreal, Canada. And they had the big geodesic dome, it was, you know, the World Fair and everything. And a bunch of us won a trip, and I'll never forget we were in um, like a sky needle type building with a rotating restaurant. And while we were eating, this Oriental guy came in with this whole entourage and Unbeknownst, and I asked who the guy was, and here it was, I don't know what they call him, whether it was the president or the emperor of Thailand. And I actually, you know, I said, well, my dad's in Thailand, you know. And somehow they got the word to him, and I got to talk to this guy and tell him that my dad was in his country, you know. And when my dad retired, the local newspaper did a newspaper article, and they asked him what one of his most memorable things was, and he's, besides his time on the Missouri, was that while he was in Thailand, 
His oldest son, Kevin, was in Montreal, Canada, shaking hands with the king of Thailand, <laughs> which he thought was pretty, you know, different. So, those are uh, little stuff like that. It was nice because of, I have a brother and a sister, and um, none of them were really military orientated, although he was in for 20 years and we grew up in the military. Uh, I ended up going in the Navy myself, so we kind of had that bond. And, you know, being at Navy guys and, you know, he didn't want to go alone, you know, it was just a, a neat thing that. Because he was in the service all that time, you know, we didn't spend a lot of time together, and this was one of those things that just happened, and uh, it became an annual thing for us. You know, it was like, all right, it was June, okay, Kevin, fill out the paperwork, we're going to the next reunion. You know, and um, he died two years ago, and I've just kept it up. I, you know, I've met great people, and they've kept in contact with me, and you know, I just. Uh, I just can't seem to say no, I just keep coming back. And every year they seem to be more enjoyable that I come back, so I think that's a, you know, it's a great thing. I'm a natural history buff anyway, and not many people say can say that they know 12 people personally that stood there and watched MacArthur, you know, sign the surrender. I mean, it's, it doesn't mean a lot to anybody, but it means a lot to me, and it means a lot to all these people. So. Yeah, I'm proud of being part of it. It's cool. I signed up and became an associate member and um, do my part, help, you know, volunteer and do things like that. And it's, a, it's a great way to keep in touch with all these people and uh, kind of keep my dad going, you know. Um, he was in After Diesel, A Division, and they were in charge of uh, fresh water and pumps and things like that. And he. Uh, a lot of his friends, uh, I don't know, Lynn Decker, Harold Alton, who was actually their second class petty officer, he was the boss. Um, Herb Farr, who is, you know, the corresponding secretary for the association. Um, I see there a couple other guys. Uh, but we have a picture of them in After Diesel in 1953 or 54, all sitting around and Two years ago at Mesa, Arizona, they were all there for like the first time in 54 years or whatever, and we got a picture of them all standing in the same position that they were in in the original picture in 54. And the original picture, one of the original pictures, is on the USS Missouri. I guess it's in the mess hall where they have the big picture thing or whatever, and uh, we've sent them a picture of the after. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, and these guys all, you know, they knew each other, they, you know, started talking old stories, and it's just like they were never apart, you know, and they're all gray and heavier and got beards, mustaches, glasses, before they were all these young 20-year-old skinny kids with, you know, so it was pretty amazing. And you could tell by the looks in their eyes and the way they approach each other just like there was something still there that was just never gone, you know. And it was pretty cool and you know, I got to meet all these guys. Um, I do remember one, he was, they were in Sosobo, Japan, and he was on board when the captain grounded it. And uh, supposedly the Navy wasn't very happy with him, you know, and it took a lot of effort. I think it took like four tugboats and two destroyers to get this thing off the sandbar and one of his friends was, and I've met the guy because I've heard him tell the story here, where he was the radio, uh, the phone talker on the bridge and between all the people and wow, they kept telling him, don't go there, slow down, move over here and he kept telling the captain, the captain kept saying, no, 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 I know where I'm going and next thing, you know, and as big as that thing was, by, you know, it just plows itself slowly into this thing and wedged it in. And then there were stories about, you know, the uh, out and about on town, you know. Um, 
some of the stories, uh, what I remember was when they took the Missouri into Bremerton, put it into dry dock. Um, you know, the things, you know, they spent all this time, you know, doing this stuff and keeping the ship operating, and then all of a sudden they have to start taking it apart. You know, and knowing that it's not going to come back out again. Well, at the time they didn't, you know. But, uh, most of his Navy stories were about the Missouri.